Damn, what a way to start the day. Good morning from Teton National Park. Today, you're gonna to be hiking the Middle Teton. For a full trail guide of the Middle Teton, you can go ahead and check the link in the description below. So I started today from the Lupine uh, Trailhead, and this hike is gonna be about 13 miles with about 6,000 feet of elevation gain. I am hiking this in late June, and I'll show you what conditions you can expect, uh, but this is very much a climb versus a hike for the majority of the year because of the snow that stays in the South Coulard, which is the route I'll be taking, and it's also the standard route to get up the Middle Teton here. Uh, so just about two miles into the hike, you haven't really missed much. Just been hiking through this beautiful sunrise and working my way up towards the Garnet uh, Basin up here, which I can't wait to get to because I've heard is just stunning. Just can't get over these inverted clouds. They're so pretty. So sun finally up and just working up the switchbacks here. So far the hiking's been uh, pretty mellow. Slow elevation gain, but the switchbacks are so wide. And if you're from Colorado and used to hiking up high, this peak tops out at like 12.8, something like that, 12.5. So even when you're up high, you're not going to be at those super high elevations. So breathing will probably be a little bit easier. But I mean, man, look at these views. Crazy. It's about a mile up to the canyon, so about four miles total. And honestly, that in and of itself is a beautiful hike from what I'm told, but our destination takes us a bit further up. So you start off the hike with um, just working through the low forest there and slowly gaining the slope of these hills. Once you're on these hills here, you can have these amazing views if you hit it with a nice sunrise, but essentially it's just switchbacks. And they're pretty long, um, but we have gained uh, quite a bit of elevation so far. After about three miles of hiking, you're gonna reach your last trail junction of the day and uh, take a left here to head up to Garnet Canyon. I don't think I'm gonna summit today because I keep stopping to take in these insane views. What the hell? It's so beautiful. I've always heard that rounding this corner is pretty amazing, so let's show it to you guys in real time. I mean, wow. Wow. So beautiful. All right, so everything's kind of in front of you. We're gonna be working up into the canyon more to the saddle there and then up the Kular, which is out of view to the middle Teton. That is the South Teton. I'm thinking if I have time and everything looks good, I might tag that as well. If you decide to do that, it adds about another mile and a half round trip of hiking. Once you get up into this upper canyon, the trail is going to end. And right now, I'm gonna have snow most of the way up to the saddle, but in the summer, it'll be a lot of boulder hopping. There's gonna be a faint trail to follow through here, um, but it's gonna be trail finding. While we're talking about boulder fields and switching over to snow, let's talk about gear for this hike. So I would say anytime you're coming here in May and before, consider it a full-blown winter climb. So avalanche conditions, um, anything you need with that. So crampons, axe, uh, maybe skis if you want to go down that way. From June and July, it's going to be a snow climb for some of it. So I'd recommend at least having a mountain axe and know how to use it, if not hiking poles, and at least having micro spikes, if not crampons. I have crampons today. I would rather have them in my bag and not use them than not have them and need them. Um, you can check all the gear 
that I recommend for this hike in the link in the description below. In addition to all that, I have a helmet and I do have hiking poles as well. Um, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is bear spray. I did rent bear spray today. Uh, it was more of a psychological thing. I started mentally psyching myself out for a while uh, for really kind of no reason. Um, but I would recommend if it gives you the peace of mind having it, I mean, worst case scenario, if a bear rolls up on you and you have nothing, well, that kind of sucks. At least if you have spray, you can feel like you tried to do something, even though the spray will probably do nothing anyway. And you are in bear country, so take that seriously. If you are gonna camp up here, I'll show you the platform sites, which you can certainly do, uh, but be sure to have uh, a bear container for your food as well. All right, up to the area they call the meadows. So this is where a popular spot to camp would be. The Forest Service and National Park asked you to not camp on anything green up here because of how delicate everything is. But uh, this is the spot. If you do want to camp, you can. Uh, for me, it just didn't really make sense. I feel like the number of miles and overall elevation for this hike didn't require a camping trip for me personally. Look at it up here. It wouldn't be a half bad spot to camp. Once you're up to this point, you can see uh, another hiker up there and you're gonna hang up into there and then go back right to the saddle. I believe this is your first look at the Grand Teton. And then you got the Male Teton and then you got the South Teton. Looking back down, just came down from there and I have another little basin here and I'm gonna hang to the left. Everything up here feels so close. I guess I still have like a mile to go before I hit the saddle. So it's not too surprising considering how I'm just about 10,000 feet right now. So a lot of elevation still to go, but it is weird. It feels like everything is just kind of deceptive up here. Up that hill and uh, now looking at this last basin here. The saddle, it goes right there and we're gonna go straight. So as you can see again, a lot of boulder hopping when all the snow is melted, but luckily for me, I have some snow left. I think there's a little baby marmont there. Very curious little guy. Up into the upper basin here. And uh, I think that this is where I'm gonna head. I'm gonna continue up here and then head up right on the saddle. Looking over to the left, you got the South Teton as well. Wow, 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 it's beautiful. So up to the saddle finally, and now you get your first good look at the Southwest Kular here. And that is right up the gut. Yeah, just uh, really happy right now to have made it to this point and making great time. The snow is really nice as well. So just super excited to get up into this uh, couloir. So a couple of notes, the climbing or hiking really to this point has been very easy. Class one, class two, um, so pretty simple stuff. Once you start to ascend this couloir here, you are gonna get into more technical class three, maybe even class four. Um, you shouldn't exceed class four, uh, but that kind of hiking and climbing. So just be aware of that. If you're not sure what any of that means, you can go ahead and check the YDS, which is the Yosemite Decimal System, which explains what classes are. And uh, I'll link that in the description below as well so you can get a better idea. But uh, yeah, pretty amazing up here. From the saddle to the summit, it's just about a half mile, a ton of climbing, over a thousand feet. So it is short, but dang, it's steep, man. Earlier I said I wasn't sure if this or this was the South Teton. It is in fact this. So very straightforward ridge and it's a class two and about three quarters of a mile. After a short climb, you're gonna get a much better view of the couloir. I was worried. I started so early 
feel like any snow climb, you want to hit it and be off the snow before it gets too soft or either avalanche risk, which isn't really this time of year, or it gets so soft that if you do fall, it's uh, self-arrest and that's useless because there's nothing firm for the ax to stick into. But um, the snow is really firm and as you can see by the previous footage, most of this couloir is in the shade, even though it's about nine o'clock. So that's great from a timing perspective. It means I really don't have to rush because based on the way the sun's hitting this, I don't think it's gonna be hitting it until 11.30, maybe even later. It also means that I have less to grip in with with my boots, which so far hasn't been a problem. But I also know that the steepest part of this couloir is right ahead of me. So I just have a feeling I'll be popping on the crampons at some point. As I approach the apron or the bottom slash run out of the couloir, I've been kind of staying right. And you can see why it's like bone dry over here, which is great. And uh, it means I don't have to deal with the snow. Eventually, this couloir is gonna get much thinner and it's not gonna give you much choice. So we'll see what the conditions are like, but for now, I can stay on dry ground, which is great. Trail conditions are okay. You got loose stuff like this, but you also have kind of a dirt trail, which is what I've been following for the most part. As you can tell, I popped my helmet on and the reason for that really is rock fall. And especially with snow, you never know when something's gonna come flying and you're just not gonna have a fun time with that. So uh, it's more of a precaution than anything. Okay, at the base of the couloir. As I said earlier, it is quite more narrow here and it's gonna be loose in the middle when there's not snow. Right now it's actually looking almost perfect, to be honest. I'm really excited. In the summer, if you wanna avoid some of the traffic and maybe rock fall, you can stick to this left side here. It'll be more class three. But um, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty straight shot right up. Man, as I'm climbing this, I'm just, grateful that no one else is in front of me because this thing is a really scary couloir to be in if rocks start falling and all sizes here are all loose and even something you know this size here would cause some serious damage coming at you let alone something like this 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 and it's all loose in here. And if God forbid someone's behind you and you send a rock like this, just scream or yell as loud as you can, rock so that they know something's coming down the pipe towards them. I'm nearing the top here. And uh, I'm gonna stay on the left side because it just looks much more solid than this nasty stuff on the right. Looking down here and uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Not a lot going on, just a lot of loose rock. Finally up here, nice little echo. And looks like there's three main points. You got this one, you got this one, and then you got this one. I'm gonna guess that this is the summit.
I am on top of the middle Teton. Woo! Yeah. Oh man. Beautiful views of the Grand over here. And of course, down into the park. Personally, I think this is the best backdrop, so I'll give some notes about the hike up the middle Teton right here. So it is uh, just about six and a half miles-ish up to the summit. And I would say besides very minor sections, I really was only class two most, most of the time, which is great. Um, yeah, the trail conditions weren't ideal in that couloir, but all in all, I am so pumped to be up here. It is so sick. Um, so yeah, not a ton of notes on this one. Um, you know, trail finding really, even from the meadows, as I said, there was no real trail. It was very straightforward. So pretty simple stuff. Um, yeah, uh, obviously no dogs on this one because it's in a national park and here in the States, we don't allow national park. Uh, <laughs> we don't allow dogs in national parks. Um, but definitely helmet, definitely, definitely helmet. I, I, I didn't end up using my ax or my crampons, but I would always recommend a helmet for this one. Even if you have to rent one, it's highly, highly worth it. Um, so just don't skimp around that. Don't think you're too cool or whatever. It's a rock could easily kill you in that couloir. So I'm gonna make my way back down to the saddle, see how long that takes, and then uh, see if we're gonna tag on uh, the South Teton or not. But. Just so pumped to be up here right now. It's so sick. Made a quick descent from the Middle Teton and then I'm, I am gonna tag the south one today. So the south one will add about a mile and a half round trip of hiking and uh, about a thousand feet of vert, give or take, 1200 maybe. Uh, you can see the lake behind me here. From here, it's a very straight hike to the summit of the South Teton, class two, and it's right there. Looking back to the middle, and uh, just been working my way up to this point here, and then gonna grab that, go to there. All right, so once you get up to this little saddle here, you got your path pretty much to the summit right ahead of you. So you're just gonna work this gully. Uh, very beautiful. You got this beautiful high alpine lake down there. And uh, we're, we're home stretch. This hike is definitely way less frequented than the Middle Teton. You can just tell by the, the type of trail that's up here, uh, but it's very straightforward and so far it's really beautiful. And you get some awesome views behind me here of not only the middle, but the Grand as well. Looking back down over to the middle and the remaining of the way up. Last little push here, and uh, very much another gully. A lot of loose rock, so be careful and wear a helmet. All right, looking down and almost about to top out. When you get up here, you're gonna see this right peak, and then the true summit is right up there, just a couple hundred feet away. Wow, just stunning up here. So you're gonna gain the ridge here, and uh, final little push, summit of the South Teton. Summit of the South Teton. Beautiful views of the middle behind me and just overall beautiful views up here. Wow, just so pretty. 
another high alpine lake down there. This place is just insane. Just a couple notes here. Oh no. Wow. I thought my helmet just slid down the mountain. Okay, uh, pretty straightforward, uh, easy hike. About three quarters of a mile, like I said, from the saddle up to here and uh, definitely worth it if you have the time and the weather and the energy and resources and everything else. But you had your beautiful views of the Grand Teton there and now you have the middle right in front of it. Uh, it's just really pretty. And you also have two high alpine lakes up here as well, which are just very beautiful to look at. Um, Jackson is stunning, stunning up here. Uh, so I'm going to wrap this video up at the car just in case I have any final notes on the way down. But overall, just a beautiful pair of uh, hikes today, the Middle Teton and the South Teton. Back down at the trailhead now. Uh, what an awesome day. Just a pair of really, really fun mountains. Super long day. It's about 6 o'clock now. Start at 4, so do the math on that. But um, definitely a leisurely pace on the way down, which was great. So uh, overall, just a fantastic hike. Highly recommended if you're uh, have the time so for a full trail guide of the middle teton and the south teton you can go ahead and check the link in the description below please subscribe not to miss any future hike related content and as always see you on the next adventure